Hello there, and welcome to another exciting episode of NYSC Half R. I am Inkem Okwago. We begin today's episode with an interview with Professor Solomon Osita Chukulobelu, Secretary to the State Government of Anambra State. He shares with us an inspiring story of how his service year molded his character for selfless service to humanity. Interestingly, he met his wife in Kano State, his state of deployment for his NYSC service year. Stay with us. served in Kano State and in Kano itself uh, between 1979 and 1980. So in those days there was just one batch of coppers. Now you have uh, is it two batches in any given year. So we uh, served from July uh, 1979. Youngsters across the country were happy to go to any part of Nigeria and I was uh, I was pleased I was posted to the north because uh, I felt how I was born in our nature went to school you know did my secondary school in our nature went to the old Bender State at a do college did HSC and then from there I went to Ibadan for my university. So I felt I needed to go experience the northern part of Nigeria. Unfortunately, I was posted to, to the north. I was posted to Kano State. We arrived Kano. I think uh, what was very clear is that um, uh, youngsters of those days were full of confidence. They were not afraid to travel to any part of uh, Nigeria, but there was also something mm. unique. Uh, this was the uh, 1979 was almost like a, the it was the year that um, uh, the Second Republic was born. So there was transition from military to civilian. So there was a new era of uh, confidence expectation in Nigeria. So it was in the midst of that that I, I went to Kano to serve. Professor Chukulobelu's commitment to service has been a value he has imbibed since his service year. And one of the things I recall very clearly, you know, in those days, we used to have what he called minor and major expedition. The major expedition, we had to do almost a 25 kilometer trek from the camp to uh, uh, Chalawa. And I had joined the trek, and on the way, you know, we we're, were still, you know, probably we had done about 10 kilometers. And somebody came chasing me on the track that the women uh, that were cooking were on strike, that they won't cook. And uh, so I had to, I was taken in the car back to the camp. And when I look back now, I was uh, 22, and uh, I inquired what was the problem. This was, Salah was coming. They hadn't, been, they hadn't been paid. And the issue was they don't have money for, for Salah. But there was no way I could pay them. So, and I said to them, the issue is food. They said, yes. I said, okay, let's go to the store. We brought us some rice, some beans, some, and shared them. You know, it was a decision I had to make on the, on the spur of the moment. I know that Chibalogu eventually reprimanded me for that. But what I did was to save a major crisis in the camp. Because what you would have heard is that people would come back from that 25-kilometer expedition and there was no food in the camp. But subsequently, Chibalogu felt, ah, this young man, you actually saved the... Uh, the day. I have, a, I have a certificate of merit still hanging in my father's house at Tonicia for that singular honor, for that singular decision. And he subsequently 
asked me to pick where I wanted to do my primary assignment as a reward. And that was how I went to work for British Petroleum. Even though from the southeastern part of the country, he thoroughly enjoyed his time in Kano State and fully integrated into the community. Kano presented me with a, a lot of good things, simply because I went to Kano to serve. If I, didn't, uh, if I wasn't posted to Kano to serve, I don't think I would I could have made a decision as a young man leaving the university to go to Kano to work. If the NYC scheme wasn't there, Kano would not be the place I would have gone to. I met my wife in Kano. She was, you know, uh, her parents were living in Kano. She was uh, going to school in Kano. And from Kano, I must tell you, I explored so much of northern Nigeria. Uh, I always say that there is no state in northern Nigeria, the old, the the states that were in existence in 1979 that I didn't visit, all of them, name them, whether it's Bauchi, whether it's uh, uh, old uh, Gongola, Bornu, uh, Sukutu. And my wife went to study in Sukutu, so I kept going back to uh, Sukutu. I've traversed the, the bulk of Nigeria, the most of Nigeria. I've driven from Kanu to Medugri. I've driven from Kanu to Sukutu. I've driven from Kanu to... To so it's, uh, uh, you know, but this was, as, this was as a young man. NYSC is a very good scheme, very, very good scheme. You meet people, 12 month period was uh, a period of, um, I look back to with a lot of uh, fond memories. And then I stayed back in Kano. If Kano wasn't, uh, a good place I would have left, you know. Indeed, I, I felt that Kano was the place to live. The skill acquisition and the entrepreneur scheme, very important. Because when there are no white collar, blue collar job to go to, it becomes important that core members use the period to acquire skills that they can either lead them to employment when they finish or get into some, if you like, self-employment when they finish or, or, or both. You know, it's very important for every core member to make use of that opportunity. It's free. Uh, what they may not realize is that when they leave uh, the service and want to learn those ex uh, skills, they may have to pay for, for them and have to find time to fit it within their other schedule. So it's something, uh, indeed, the, most of the time, I had, when I go to represent the governor, I stress that, please, Make take good opportunity of this, whatever it is, you know. Um, if a, a, a male core member can go and learn how to sew, it's not only women that can do that, or even how to bake or whatever. So it's very important. These are skills you can turn into cash, should you want to, or you can even bring to bear in your domestic and personal lives. It's very, very important. That was truly insightful. Professor Chukulobelu is a shining example of the NYSC scheme as the values instilled in him during his service year remains with him till this day as he continues to serve his fatherland 41 years after. Our next story is on Najim Fatai, an ex co member who is a beneficiary of the NYSC SAID program in Oyo State. He learned fashion designing during his service year and has today established his own fashion outfit, Jersey Empire Fashion Enterprise, where he produces branded souvenirs and clothes. Najim is currently a Said trainer 
and has trained thousands of core members and young people in the community. Stay with us. The name of the company is Jesse Empire Fashion Enterprise. We are into sewing and customizing branding of souvenirs and clothes. And also, we train core members on how to sew and how to customize. We've trained thousands of core members. This is the tailoring section where we have industrial machines. The function of this one is to join the clothes together. So we use this to join the clothes together. Then we use this for normal sewing. Then we use this, come. This is taping machine. Like this round neck now. After doing the round neck, you need this machine to make it firm. To do the neck and to tape it down, like this down. To tape it, to make it okay and accurate like this, you need this machine. We call it taping machine. So this is the same machine for sewing. We call it industrial sewing machine. So this is where we train our students, our core members. They have to start using manual. They have to know how to use manual machine. This is their photograph, the batch C. They just finished their own training. They introduced Said, skill acquisition and entrepreneurship development to us. Then I managed to learn how to brand on, on clothes, on souvenirs, and um, how to make banners for advertisements and brand for different companies. So after camp, I decided to follow up with the training, where I learned for like three months. I'll go to PPA. After PPA, I'll still manage to go for the training. When I finished serving, with the situation of the country, I asked myself, do I have the time to start looking for a job everywhere? When I've learned something that I can actually set up myself. Though it wasn't that easy because there was no capital. I just finished serving. But when I was serving, I was trying to save. Even it wasn't that easy then. So I managed to start the business with um, one sewing machine. If I get a job, I'll go out, do it from some people and I'll do the design use some other people's machine to do it. So later I started saving from one machine to two to three. But today I think I, I can tell you I have 13 manual machine and 10 industrial machine. And I have my own company registered, which is Jesse Empire Fashion Enterprise. I have um, almost all the printing machines now. And I served 2014. When I finished serving, I went to NYSA Secretariat. That's, I've learned this. Can you give me opportunity to train coppers? At first they were like, you just finished serving. What do you have to buy all the machines? I'll definitely catch up with this. Then I, was, I only have one mention. So from there, I tried to struggle to get more mention, and they gave me the chance to train. So today, I've trained thousands of core members, and I have some of them around me doing their business. I can still count more than 500 across the nation that they are into this business, doing their business without, and they are using this to feed their family, cater for themselves. The last election, I can say one of my students was the one that got the Southwest, one of the 
party's Southwest campaign shirt. I deal with some companies and I deal with individuals, but what Jesse Empire do most is empowering the youth. I allow the youth, the, most especially the core members, to come around. What I normally do is, if you come to me, you want to learn. We all know that you need to pay, but it's going to be a token. Like learning how to brand, I only charge them for 5,000 Naira. I am a Falangiri Damula Mary from Kwara State, an ex gun member. While I was serving, I joined Jesse Empire to learn um, male fashion. Since I've been here, I've learned a lot. Now I know how to sew for guys, for male rather, and my boss, Jesse Empire, is really, he really tried for me because after my service here, he, he actually allowed me to stay here to be. Um, sewing whatever jobs I get because I don't have a shop of my own now. So I would like to say thank you very much to Jesse Empire because even though for him, I wouldn't really want to go into this business because I don't have money to start. And to start the law, you have to get a shop. People have to know you. People have to see what you do. At least, I, I did this myself. Yeah. It's female wears and I do male wears too, very well. Even though for NYC, I wouldn't even think of learning for male because learning now, even now that I want to learn for females more because there's nothing like you've learned it all, you still want to advance. And now that I want to learn more, I'm hearing like 280,000 era to learn what I've already learned just to have advanced classes. No, NYC have really tried for me and so many people too, I can't say. I was introduced to Jess Empire during my service here in 2016, 2017 at the NYC Orientation Cup in Isai. And um, fortunately, I was posted to Ibadan, and um, he happens to be based in Ibadan too, so I continued from there with him. And um, so far, even after service here, I think um, four years down now, we are still here. So NYC actually had done a great thing in giving us um, this leverage. If not for Said, I don't know where I will be today. Because today, from this work, from this customizing and tailoring business that I learned for free from Saeed Skills Acquisition, I think I can boast of having two houses on my own. I don't know the kind of job I will do that will actually fetch me that. I so much thank God and I so much thank NYC and I thank Fry Government for actually introducing Saeed to NYSA because I don't believe my life will have been better than this if I don't train on that side. I so much believe that when I was learning, I told myself that this business, I must follow it up. And today I'm so grateful to God and I'm so grateful to Said because I was serving but today, um, I think NYSA, uh, so, uh, they are happy to have Jesse Empire. Because most time we train for free. Because anytime I remember that I, I, was, I was trained for free to get to where I am today, I decided to do that like it's not about the money we are making. It's about imparting knowledge and giving life to people. When I was serving, I told my friend one day that, come, you, once you are, we are done at work, you go home or you go to cinema, you guys will be playing around. Then they used to laugh me that you, you, are, you are going again. But later, when they noticed that, this guy is actually making it because then my 19 hits, I don't even touch it. Sometimes when the Alawi, they are yet to pay Alawi. Middle of the month, most of them will have broke. I'll be the one to be feeding everybody. I'll tell them, let me show you how to start this business. Let me show you some things. Some of them agreed. 
and some still believe that it's nothing. So it got to a stage, you know, when towards the end of the service, they started saying, ah, I just came to waste my time here. I said, you did not, you wasted your time because you want to waste your time. A lot of people believe that NYC is just all about you going to your PPA, coming back, then you play around. I used to tell my students now that NYC is just like IT. You are done in school. That a year is for you to sit down. What did I want to do with my life? What next? The kind of life you choose when you are serving determine what you are going to do after service. Because after service, some people will go home sleeping. I have some of my students here. I can even I can boast of some of them that they've actually done their masters from this business. And I have some of my students here that came to me, Empire, I just finished my house. So if you are still believing that NYC is a waste of time, maybe it's because you still need to sit down to check yourself, what did I actually want to do with my life? Because I don't see NYC to be a waste of time. Beautiful designs there. You too can become a CEO. Are you a core member, a prospective core member, or a Nigerian youth? Find your passion and creativity. And during your service here, take full advantage of the NYSC Skill Acquisition and Entrepreneurship Development Program and acquire the right skills for self-reliance. We would be right back. The National Youth Service Call, a call to service, a call to nationhood. Nigerian youths, stand up and embrace this clarion call. Wherever you are posted, accept it, embrace it. Do not harbor any fears because your security is assured. Develop common ties with members of your host communities. You would discover that North, South, East and West, we are all brothers with common ties and a shared destiny as one nation. Do not lobby for preferential posting for it is unpatriotic and illegal. Report at once to the orientation camp as soon as you are posted and contribute your quota to the overall development of our great nation, Nigeria. The National Youth Service Corps, building future leaders. Welcome back. Sadly, this is how far we can go on today's episode of NYSC Half R. Do you have a question or comment? Please write to us on the online handles displayed on your screens right now, and we will write back. Remember, the safety of core members in our communities is the responsibility of you and I. Until I see you next time, I am Inkem Okwago. Stay safe. The Director General and Management of the National Youth Service Corps wish to remind the general public of the provisions of the NYSC Act, which states in Section 13, Subsection 1, that any person who fails to report for service in the Service Corps in the manner directed by the Directorate, or as the case may be, prescribed, pursuant to the provisions of this Act, or who refuses to make himself available for service for a period specified in Subsection 2 of the Act, is guilty of an offence and liable on conviction to a fine or to imprisonment to a term of 12 months or both fine and imprisonment. Subsection 2 states that any person who is not eligible to participate in the service year so participates or attempts to participate is guilty of an offence or haven't served in a service year and has been duly issued with a certificate of national service or certificate of exemption, as the case may be, is guilty of an offence and is liable upon conviction to a fine or imprisonment to a term of two years or both fine and imprisonment. All stakeholders, including core producing institutions, prospective core members and guardians, should be guided in their conduct, 
and desist from criminal practices in relation to the scheme. Thank you.